Hi, I'm Stephen Childs of VirtualVoiceLessons.net, and I would like to welcome you to our exercise series entitled The Five-Tone Major Scale for Advanced Breathing Techniques. You may recall in our Breathing Basics series that the most perfect breath that we could ever hope to take while singing a song is a breath that is allowed to be taken in slowly. And there are, in fact, many places in a song that will allow us this treasured opportunity such as the intro to a song, or after an instrumental section, and so on. But of course, there are often times when we need to take in a breath within a split second, and then again, and again, quickly, right after a long, air-depleting phrase directly into another. And this is the very situation that seems to get us all in trouble. It's almost like a battle that's going on between a voice that wants to do its own thing and the vocalist who wants to take control of it. If there really is a battle that takes place within the act of singing, then this can be considered the initial battleground. So here are the ground rules. We must learn how to take in breaths as quickly as a song demands, without taking in too little or too much air, without tightening up the neck and abdomen. Now, to take in breaths as quickly as a song demands is quite a challenge. Because again, we don't want to take in a one second breath when there is a two second pause in the song. Even worse, of course, is falling behind the rhythm by not taking the breath fast enough. And I would have to say that most people fail the first of these two scenarios more than the latter. Because every singer knows that falling behind is as bad as it gets. And it is very noticeable by any listener. And because this is generally regarded as a no-no by really everyone, singers sometimes fall into the trap of taking what I like to call panic breaths. These are the breaths that are taken while the singer who will do anything not to fall behind the beat. They will lift the chest, they will flex every muscle, they will take in so much air, so head of beat, that it becomes a very fatiguing and frankly, unmusical ordeal. And singing shouldn't become an ordeal to begin with. It should be a free and enjoyable experience. And it can be. So here is a great statement that has helped me over the years. And I would highly recommend that you commit it to memory as well. It is, we do not want to be tense when singing becomes intense. Again, we do not want to be tense when singing becomes intense. So, in order that we don't tense up in a panic when a song is becoming air demanding, we will learn about and hopefully apply a helpful technique that will enable us to win the fight between the will of the voice and the will of the mind. Here's a great technique that we will use to help us with our faster inhales. This technique has been appropriately named catch breaths and you will see its benefits immediately with any song or vocalese such as the five tone scale that you will apply it to. As you know, when we decide to start singing a song, we need to take in our initial breath. Now the first breath that we take is going to be the most important breath in each song section and it is quite different from the rest that follow. We can actually compare this breath to eating breakfast in the morning. Now, breakfast, of course, is always said to be the most important meal of the day, as it sets us up with the initial burst of energy that we need to start the day off right. If we don't eat an adequate serving of food in the morning, we will wind up being sluggish throughout the day, even after our first next goal meal. The same is true with our initial breath. If it is drawn in too shallow, the rest of the phrase will suffer. So hopefully, this first breath will be drawn in somewhat slowly and held for a second in order to allow us to seat the air pressure in the chest. So here we go. We take in our first breath. Now, as we sing, we obviously lose air. And when we're done that particular phrase, as you can see, we usually have 
some air left over. And it is at this moment that we have our problems. You see, people do one of two things wrong in this particular point in the song. They either dump all the air out of their lungs and then re-inhale it back, or they take in the next breath as big as the first, which then unfortunately turns out to be too much air in the lungs. Both of these scenarios are extremely common and are extremely bad. What we need to do is utilize catch breaths. In other words, we only need to replace what was lost. And this usually turns out to be a little wisp of air. So here we go again. We've taken our initial breakfast breath. We lose breath from singing. And then we inhale back what was lost only. And this usually turns out to be the most comfortable approach to singing. You would be surprised at how little air we actually need in order to sing most phrases. Here, let me demonstrate this for you. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate for you is how little air we actually need in order to sing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dump all the air out of my lungs, and I'm going to take in just a slight wisp of air, and we'll see how many times I can do a major scale. Here I go. Let me just oxidize my blood real quick. Okay. All that with the tiniest little bit of air. Now I'm going to see how long I can sing with a full current of air. I'm going to take in a decent breath and I'm going to sing this scale over and over and over see how many times I can do it. Here we go. Right about there is where I start running out of air. Now, what song is ever going to do that? No song is going to have a melody that is sung that long with one uh, mouthful of air. So you can see, we really do need very, very little air to accomplish what we need to in singing. You see, we really only need a tiny bit of air to sing most phrases. We absolutely do not need to take in another huge breath. We only need a catch breath that will catch us back up to where we were. If our initial breath is compared to eating breakfast, the catch breaths are little healthy snacks that follow. This of course is what so many dietitians recommend for us for healthy living. To eat a good breakfast and then stabilize the rest of the day with several mini meals. Instead, so many of us eat a large breakfast, a large lunch, a large dinner, plus snacks in between. And of course, the immediate results from this overeating is being sluggish. The same is true with overbreathing. We become sluggish by being stuffed with air. So again, only replace the air that was lost. And as far as dumping all the air out of the lungs when we are done singing a phrase, I have to warn you that this is extremely fatiguing and should be avoided with each phrase. This would be akin to throwing up a meal <laughs> and then go back to eat more. This is obviously not a good approach to singing or eating. To avoid inhaling too early or too late, there is a simple solution that we should consider while practicing our vocalises and when we are singing songs. We must always move some part of our body to the beat of the music. Let me repeat that. We must always move some part of our body to the beat of the music. Now this is one of those easy flash fixes that if applied throughout a vocal performance will fix many potential problems before they ever happen. We must move to the beat of the music and inhale on those beats. You see, breathing can be a very expressive ornament and should not just be guessed at. Each breath must be taken 
musically, not haphazardly. If we just stand there like a bump on a log, without embracing the music's rhythm and tempo, how can we expect to time our breaths correctly? You see, timing is more felt than calculated. And if we move any part of our bodies, whether it's through hand motions, or tapping of the foot, or a whole bodily sway, we will find that timing becomes accurate without thought. Again, it is something that is felt rather than calculated. And remember, you will find it very difficult to find any professional singer who just stands there while performing. How boring that would be to watch. And I could say with confidence that the voice itself will sound boring. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of those fixes that fixes many things. I hope that you have great success in developing control over quick inhales. And I encourage you to keep working on your catch breath and the timing of your inhales through body motion with every exercise and every song. You will find that perseverance pays off. And it is these seemingly small details that enables us to be great. But as with all goals in life, the end result outshines the labor to reach them. This great truth has been placed into perspective so beautifully by the French novelist Emily Zola when he stated that the artist is nothing without the gift, but the gift is nothing without the work. I am Stephen Childs of virtualvoicelessons.net, and I would like to say thank you for listening, and God bless.